Welcome back once again all of my low carb friends and for those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. Today we have another video that is by request. A while ago I made a video and showed you guys how to make keto biscotti made with almond flour. And Lola's mom commented and asked if I could make a nut-free version of biscotti. And another person commented and asked if I could make a chocolate version of biscotti. So I figure, hey, let's combine them both. Let's make a nut-free chocolate keto biscotti. And if you don't want this to be chocolate, you can always substitute the cocoa powder with a little bit more coconut flour and you will have a plain nut-free keto biscotti. And I'm also going to show you how to make a super quick keto hot caramel mocha. And if you want printable versions of these, you can check out my website at janetsdeliciouslowcarbkitchen.com. You can find printable versions of these and other goodies there for you. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see lots of easy, delicious, low-carb keto recipes, make sure you click that subscribe button and click the notification bell that's right next to the subscribe button. That way you could be notified every time I put out a new video on Wednesdays and Saturdays. And if you'd like to help support the channel, make sure you scroll down in the description of the video. You'll see some Amazon affiliate links. Anytime you purchase anything using those Amazon affiliate links, a small portion of whatever you purchase will go to me and will help to support the channel. So anytime you want to shop on Amazon for anything, make sure you remember me, use my affiliate link, and a small portion of your purchase will go to help support the channel. And while you do all that, let's get cooking. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Line an 8 by 8 inch cake pan with parchment paper. Allow the parchment paper to hang over the sides of the pan because you're going to use this as handles to lift the biscotti out after it's baked. In a large mixer bowl, combine a half cup of coconut flour, a fourth cup of cocoa powder, 3 fourths cup of powdered swerve or powdered sweetener of your choice. You can adjust this more or less depending on how sweet you like your biscotti. I like mine sweet. 1 fourth cup of granulated monk fruit sweetener or granulated sweetener of your choice. Again, you can adjust this more or less depending on how sweet you like your biscotti. 2 teaspoons of baking powder and a fourth teaspoon of salt. Sift or whisk these all together until they're fully combined and there are no lumps in the dry ingredients. Add two large room temperature eggs. Make sure they are room temperature. They beat in more smooth when, you, when they are room temperature. Beat on low for about 10 seconds or just until the dry ingredients has been moistened. Then increase the speed to medium low and beat on medium low for another 20 to 30 seconds or until everything is fully combined and you have a crumbly mixture. Add 3 fourths cup of the oil of your choice. I'm using canola oil but that's not really 100% keto so you can use whatever oil you want. And 1 teaspoon of vanilla extract. Beat on medium for another 30 seconds or until everything is fully combined and you have a smooth dough. Scrape down the sides of the bowl and push all of the dough to the center of the bowl. Allow the dough to rest uncovered at room temperature for about 5 minutes. This just helps the coconut flour to absorb any extra moisture. You want your dough to be moist, but you don't want it to be too moist. If it's too moist, the biscotti will not crisp up. So allow it to sit about 5 minutes to absorb the moisture a little bit. Once it has set for 5 minutes, stir it just a little bit just to make sure that your dough is the right texture. You're looking for a smooth, soft, slightly moist dough. Scoop the dough into your prepared cake pan. Then use the back of a wooden spoon or your fingers and gently press the dough out till it's evenly spread throughout the pan. Make sure you get it as even as you can so that way it cooks evenly. Once it's spread evenly in your pan, place it in your preheated oven and bake at 350 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. 
or until it's slightly darkened around the edges. Mine took exactly 25 minutes. As I always say, everybody's oven is different, so you're looking for it to be just a little bit darkened around the edges. Once it's baked, remove it from the oven. It will still be soft, but it will firm up as it cools. Allow it to cool at room temperature for about 45 minutes or until it begins to get firm. It's not going to start being 100% crispy yet, but it should be firm. Once you've let it sit for 45 minutes and it is firm in the pan, keep your oven preheated to 350 degrees and line a large baking sheet with parchment paper. Grasp the parchment paper handles and lift the biscotti slab out of the pan and onto a clean cutting surface. Carefully cut the firm biscotti into sticks that are about a half to one inch wide depending on how big you want your stick. Mine's probably closer to an inch. I like mine kind of wide. Make sure you cut this carefully because it still will be warm. And gluten-free baked goods are always very fragile when they have any warmth to them. So be very careful when you are cutting this so it does not crumble on you. Once they're cut into long sticks, cut each stick in half. So you're going to have sticks that are about four inches long somewhere around in there and you can you can cut these into any size you want however big or small you want them it's up to you there once they're cut to your desired size keep your oven preheated to 350 degrees place the firm sticks onto your prepared baking sheet and place them cut side down so the side that you've cut the softer side Put that face down onto your baking sheet in a single layer. Make sure you don't stack these. Give them a little bit of space around the edges so that they can have good airflow so that they can toast evenly. Then place them in your preheated oven and bake them at 350 degrees for about five minutes or until the underside of the biscotti stick is slightly darkened. Remove them from the oven once they're toasted on the, other, on the underside and allow them to cool for about five minutes so they can firm up just a little bit and you don't burn your fingers. Then carefully turn the sticks over to the opposite side that is still a cut side and bake them again at 350 degrees for another five minutes or until they're toasted all the way around. Remove them from the oven. Now they still will not be completely crispy yet, but they will get crispy as they cool. So allow them to cool on the pan for about five minutes or so so you don't burn your fingers. Then transfer them to a wire rack and allow them to sit for about 20 to 30 minutes or until they are crispy. If you've ever had biscotti, you know the texture of biscotti. Biscotti is a crusty type cookie that's designed for dipping in your coffee or your tea or your milk or anything like that. You can eat it by itself too, but it's designed for dipping. So it is a crispy, crusty cookie and it will crisp up as it cools. Now this can take a little bit longer to crisp up. Mine took about 25 minutes to crisp up all the way. This is made with coconut flour, which is a gluten-free flour, and we are using sugar alternatives so it does take longer to crisp up regular sugar crisps up right away and will be crispy as soon as you pretty much as soon as you take it out of the oven well when you're when you're using a gluten-free flour and when you're using sugar alternatives they don't crisp up as quickly so so you do have to let it set for the 20 to 30 minutes just be patient once they're nice and crispy place them on a serving platter you can eat them by themselves or you can dip them in some coffee tea or milk if you do have any leftovers, store them in a large Ziploc bag or an airtight container at room temperature for up to five days. In a large blender, place one cup of hot coffee or espresso, make sure it is hot. Add one fourth cup of warm milk of your choice. Make sure it is warm. You don't want to cool off your coffee, so make sure the milk is slightly warm. Add two tablespoons of keto caramel syrup. I'm using a brand called Jordan's Skinny Syrups. It's zero calories, zero carbs, zero sugar, but 
It is sweetened with sucralose, so it's technically not 100% keto. But if you are looking for a 100% keto caramel syrup, Choco Zero makes a really good keto caramel syrup. Or you can check out my recipe for caramel sauce that we used when we made the pumpkin spice cheesecake with caramel topping. You can use that also. Add a fourth teaspoon of sea salt. Now this is optional. This is only if you want your caramel mocha to be a salted caramel mocha. If you don't want salted caramel and you just want plain caramel, then you can leave the salt out. It's up to you how you want it to taste. You also can put more or less depending on how salty you like your salted caramel if you choose to use it. Add one tablespoon of keto chocolate syrup. I'm using the Hershey sugar-free syrup, but that is not keto. It does have a couple carbs in it and it is sweetened with erythritol and sucralose. So it's technically not really keto, but again, Choco Zero has a really good keto-friendly chocolate syrup if you want to use that instead. Now, if you don't want this to be a mocha and you just want it to be a caramel latte, you can leave the chocolate syrup out completely and just add a little bit more caramel syrup. Add one tablespoon of coconut oil. I know this sounds like a weird thing to put in coffee, but it gives a really nice smooth texture to your coffee drinks. Add two tablespoons of monk fruit sweetener or granulated sweetener of your choice, or you can use five to seven drops of liquid stevia. Now again, this sweetener is optional. It all depends on how sweet you like your coffee drinks. The caramel syrup and the chocolate syrup, they already have sweeteners in them, so you'll already have a sweet taste from those. But if you feel that's still not sweet enough, you can add a couple tablespoons of the monk fruit sweetener. Add a fourth teaspoon of vanilla extract. Then put the lid on your blender and blend on high for about 30 seconds or so, or just until it's frothy on the top. Once it's done blending, pour it into the glass of your choice. If you want to, you can top it with some keto whipped cream. I'll leave a link in the description to that or some extra caramel or chocolate syrup if you want to. That's all up to you how you like that. If this does cool off a little cooler than what you like it, then you can just pop it back in the microwave for a couple seconds to warm it back up because sometimes after you blend it, it does cool off a little bit. So depending on how hot you want your drink, you can always pop it back in the microwave before you put any toppings on it. Then drink and enjoy. And those are our recipes of the day. I hope you enjoyed them. If you did and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you click that thumbs up like button, click that subscribe button. You can leave me a comment if you want to. Let me know if there's any recipes that you'd like to learn how to make and I'll do what I can to get those out there for you. And as always, keep cooking.